Welcome to Sports News. A faction of the Nigeria Football Federation, the NFF, has inaugurated a new electoral committee ahead of the September the 4th elections into the board of the Federation. The mandate of the electoral committee, as approved by the Congress, is to conduct a free and fair election that will usher in a new NFF board on Thursday, September the 4th, in Abuja. The Minister of Sports, Tammy Danagogo, has expressed total confidence in the capacity of the new executive committee of the Nigeria Football Federation to meet international standards. During a courtesy call to him by the new NFF board, Mr. Danagogo urged the new administrators uh, to open a channels of communication with all aggrieved institutions and individuals with a view to reconciling all parties and achieving lasting peace. Europe's football governing body, UEFA, have concluded the draws for the group stages of the UEFA Champions League. Last year's runner-up, Atletico Madrid, will face Juventus, Olympiacos and Swedish side Malmo in Group A. Ten-time champions Real Madrid have been drawn with Swiss side FC Basel, Liverpool of England and Ludogrets. Portuguese giants Benfica, Zenit, Bayer Leverkusen and Monaco are in Group C, while Arsenal will contend with Borussia Dortmund, Galatasaray and Belgian side Anderlecht in Group D. Bayern Munich and Manchester City will lock horns again in Group E. Barcelona and Ajax will trade tackles in Group F alongside with PSG and Apoel Nicosia. 2012 winners Chelsea have Schalke, Sporting Lisbon and Maribor to contend with in their group, while FC Porto, Athletic Bilbao and Bata Borisov slug it out in Group H. And Portugal's Cristiano Ronaldo has been voted the 2013-14 UEFA Best Player in Europe by a panel of football journalists. Ronaldo's contribution to Real Madrid's Champions League triumph last season has been recognized with the award. Well, the Portuguese captain received the accolade at the Grimaldi Forum in Monaco from UEFA President Michel Platini. That's Sports News. The News at 10 continues shortly. Over now to the foreign scene, where President Petro Poroshenko says Russia has deployed its troops across Ukraine's eastern region. Now, this comes as pro-Russian rebels are believed to have opened a new front in the south. Amarachi Ubani tells us more. It is interesting indeed. NATO says it has detected a significant increase of Russian arms being supplied to the rebels over the past two weeks. This might confirm what Ukraine has been saying all this time, that Russia has been using every excuse to smuggle weapons to rebels in the country. The United Nations is supposed to discuss the crisis in New York much later. Over in Syria, the Observatory for Human Rights says the IS militants may have killed dozens of Syrian army soldiers as they tried to flee to Hama province after their airbase in Tabqa was attacked by the militants. It says the militants have been quite boastful of their atrocities, even posting on its Twitter accounts the number of deaths. The Tabqa airbase near the northern city of Raqqa is in stronghold, an IS stronghold for that matter. It fell on Sunday following weeks of intense fighting. Meanwhile, the UN says 43 of its peacekeepers are being held captive by an armed group in Syria's Golan Heights. It says another 81 peacekeepers are being restricted to their positions in the vicinity in Al Ruahina. This is not the first time UN peacekeepers have been detained by rebel fighters in recent years. Back in March last year and in May, peacekeepers were detained and released safely. Those are today's major headlines. It's back to you. Thanks a lot, Amarachi. And the main news again. The Minister of Health, Professor Onyebuchi Chuku, today confirmed that a doctor who secretly treated a diplomat who had contact with the index case, Patrick Sawyer, has died of the Ebola virus disease in Port Harcourt, the River State capital. The World Health Organization has expressed worry that the Ebola virus may infect more than 20,000 people before it's brought under control in West Africa. President Goodluck Jonathan has directed the National Identity Card Management Team to ensure quick issuance of the new e-card to Nigerians. And the former Minister of Information and Director General of NAFDAQ, Professor Dora Akunyele, has been buried in Anocha local government area of Anambra State. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. Focus on Africa is up next. I'm Idroma Kunyato. Good night.